Andrei Soldatov, The Compatriots, The Brutal and Chaotic History of Russia's Exiles, Emigres, and Agents Abroad. Delve into the gripping dynamics of Russia's exiles, emigres, and agents abroad as explored in Andrei Soldatov's The Compatriots. The book sheds light on the complex and often chaotic history of the vast Russian diaspora, exploring their attempts to influence both their homeland and Western perceptions of Russia from afar. Discover how figures like Vladimir Bukovsky sought to instigate change in the Soviet Army and the USSR as a whole, while the KGB continued to treat emigrants with suspicion. As you progress, you will encounter the world of Soviet spy George Koval and learn about his crucial role in stealing American secrets during World War II. The Russian Diaspora's Influence The Russian diaspora, comprised of over 30 million people, makes up a significant part of the Rusky Mir, or world of Russian speakers connected to Russia. Many emigrants have sought to sway Western perspectives about Russia or create change within the country. Vladimir Bukovsky attempted to prompt mass defections from the Soviet army in Afghanistan, while former FSB officer Alexander Litvinenko claimed the FSB orchestrated the 1999 Moscow bombings to aid Putin's presidential elected bid. During the Cold War, the U.S. State Department searched within emigrant communities for potential members of a new Russian government, and tried to form liberation committees to ignite resistance in communist-occupied countries. Some Russians and sympathizers abroad have aided the Kremlin, including George Koval, who spied on the American atom bomb program for the Soviets while his family was stationed in Moscow. The KGB has always regarded emigrants as a threatening congregation of potential rebels challenging the Kremlin's sovereignty. Waves of Post-Revolution Russian Emigration The history of Russian emigration after the revolution is characterized by waves of migration, each with a different motive. While the first wave consisted mainly of anti-communist white Russians trying to escape Stalin's regime, the second wave was comprised of thousands of Russian soldiers and civilians who found themselves in the western part of Germany on Armistice Day. The third wave, which occurred in the late 1970s and 1980s, saw members of the intelligentsia emigrating due to political convictions. In the early 2000s, well-educated young people were leaving Russia and other former Soviet republics for better career opportunities. The article highlights that under authoritarian regimes, intelligence is about protecting the regime and policing emigres. U.S. policymakers took a decade to comprehend how corrupt and cynical the political system was that replaced communist rule in Russia. Additionally, many politicians, activists, and artists fled state persecution and joined anti-Putin activists in the West. Soviet Espionage in America Soviet espionage in the United States during World War II was rife with deception and disinformation as the U.S. Communist Party worked to prevent America from entering the war and sow discord among Trotskyites. The Chaika, a Bolshevik secret service, first opened an office in New York in the late 1930s, and Soviet secret service activity in America escalated during the war. Midtown Manhattan buildings hosted offices for Trotsky's newspaper and the Soviet trade organization Antorg, providing many spies with entry to the country. Alexander Vasiliev, a former SVR officer and journalist, revealed much of this information from KGB archives he accessed while compiling his book. Blood-soaked Russian espionage The KGB's ice-cold style and Stalin's paranoia created a legacy of ruthlessness towards exiles. The Soviet secret police abducted and assassinated their enemies around the world from the 1930s to the present day. The poisoning of an anti-Putin activist in London in 2006, the killing of an opposition leader in Moscow in 2015, and a nerve agent attack on a former Russian spy in Britain in 2018 are but a few examples. Russian espionage retains its blood-soaked history. The KGB's Calculated Tactics the KGB used both violence and psychological tactics to control and manipulate Soviet emigres in the 1950s. These tactics included radio propaganda and even using family members to plead for their return. Later, a new unit called the 19th Section was created to manage Soviet citizens abroad, 
and false rumors were spread to foment distrust. The KGB's foreign intelligence became the Foreign Intelligence Service in the mid-80s, but leaks and cyber operations have shown that their tactics persist today. Putin's Modern Exile The KGB chairman, Andropov, used exile against political dissidents during the Soviet Union. Exiles were allowed to return in 1991, but few returned and received little support. In 2000, Putin renewed the practice of exile as soon as he took office, with many activists leaving to avoid persecution. Putin's opponents, such as media magnate Vladimir Guzinsky and chess champion Garry Kasparov, were forced out, while oil tycoon Mikhail Khodorkovsky was jailed and then exiled to Germany. In 2017, 2,664 Russians sought political asylum in the U.S. Prison and exile have always been intertwined in Russia. Bank of New York's Russian Connection In the 80s and 90s, Bank of New York facilitated the transfer of billions of dollars from Russia to America. A kidnapping in Moscow led to the discovery of connections between the bank's VP and Russian organized crime. Boney paid a $38 million fine, but no charges were brought against anyone in Russia. Putin vs. Oligarchs The book describes how Putin took down the oligarchs who challenged him. Boris Berezovsky, a former Putin ally, fled to London and helped build an opposition group. Putin retaliated with propaganda accusing him of supporting terrorists. Media mogul Alexander Lebedev incurred Putin's wrath over a gossipy piece about Putin's love life. Lebedev's businesses suffered, and he ended up sweeping the streets of Moscow. Oil tycoon Mikhail Khodorkovsky also challenged Putin publicly and spent a decade in penal colonies. Khodorkovsky became a focus of opposition, and in 2013 a deal allowed him to leave Russia. Despite refraining from direct political activity, he founded Open Russia, a group supporting civil society activism. Putin remains in power, and few seem to care about his increasingly tight grip on the political system. Reuniting the Russian Church After the Russian Orthodox Church split into the communist-controlled Red Church and the aristocratic White Church, Putin made efforts to unify the churches. The opportunity arose with the death of American journalist Paul Klebnikov, where the Kremlin arranged memorial services in both red and white churches. Finally, in 2007, representatives from both churches signed the Act of Canonical Communion, reuniting the Russian Church. Putin's Agenda for the Diaspora Upon assuming the presidency in 2000, Putin increased Russia's intelligence activity abroad and developed a program to place covert agents, often as emigres, known as the Illegals Program. He also established organizations to coordinate and influence the diaspora, accentuating their value to the Russian state. In 2001, he held the First World Congress of Compatriots, where he outlined his agenda for the diaspora, proclaiming that a strong diaspora can only exist if there is a strong state. This included the creation of a federal agency, the Russo Trebnichestvo, which sponsored Russophone media and possibly served as cover for intelligence operations. In The Compatriots, Andrei Soldatov delves deep into the intricate web of Russia's exiles, emigres, and agents abroad providing invaluable insight into their motivations, aspirations, and the often brutal ways they have been treated by the homeland they left behind. The authoritarian nature of the Russian regimes shaped the intelligence apparatus and its focus on controlling and policing emigres at all costs, even employing brutal methods like abduction and assassination. As the complex and turbulent history of the vast Russian diaspora unfolds, it becomes increasingly clear that the legacy of Soviet-era intelligence and its practices persist to this day, influencing the world we live in. Explore the gripping tales of power struggles, resistance, and subterfuge in the shadows cast by Russia's most secretive networks.